My name is Alex Dorgen, I'm an Ansible specialist, and I'm going to be diving into a more detailed walkthrough of getting LDAP set up in Ansible Automation Platform 2.5. So let's jump right into the live demonstration. So as you can see, I have a base Ansible Automation Platform. I have no previous users created, and I have no authentication methods set up other than that default authentication method. So I'm going to go to the docs, specifically to section 3.4.2 in the 2.5 platform, for configuring LDAP authentication. So it does tell me go to access management authentication methods and then click create authentication. So I've already gone to that step. So go to create authentication, jump back, use LDAP for the authentication type, and then I'll put in a name that is unique. So scroll down to LDAP, click next. And this can be IDM Shadow Man for my particular lab. So let's look at the next two. So legacy authentication. This is a fresh install, so I'm not migrating from 2.4, so this does not apply. So next is the LDAP server URI field, which is convenient enough where my LDAP server is. So I can copy and paste, or I can just type in. So I know that I want, in my case, LDAP S set up, so secure. And my particular LDAP server is idm.chatterman.dev, and I want 636 for the secure port. Next is going to be that bind DN. Yes, they give you a default if you're looking here. That's a good starting point. But I'm going to jump back into my terminal, which is running on RHEL 8. So I have previously installed, in this case, the L open LDAP client. So if I do a DNF install, open LDAP clients, it's installed, so it won't do anything. This gives me access to LDAP search. So this is an easy way to do some of this before I go through the process of setting up in the platform. I've already got it installed in whatever operating system you're leveraging, it will make these processes easier for you. So I am going to copy and paste this from another screen, but I'll walk through what's there. So I'm using LDAP search and then a, a bind DN. In this case, I'm using the directory manager. So this is what's set up when I installed IDM. You do not have to use that, especially if you don't know that. I can use a bind user that I already know that it's set up. And I'll show that in a second. Dash W, capital W means I'm using uh, asking for a password on when I run this command, dash P, I'm using 389, so I want to connect to LDAP. You could, again, set this to be 636, dash H, this is the host, idm.chatterman.dev, and I'm specifically trying to get the information on a user, in this case, the tower user, because that's why I want to set up as my bind user. So it asks for the password, I'm going to put that in, and it will print out all the information about that user. So if I already knew what that bind user was and that bind information uh, needed was, I could have just skipped this step. But this conveniently gives me exactly that bind definition. So I can jump back in here rather than copying what was part of the docs and paste that in here from the command line. And I do know what that bind password is, so I can paste that in here. You could also go through the process of, you know, taking the same command and replacing that user. So I'll actually do that to prove that this uh, the bind password that I know I just typed works. So with that UID. Again, got a response back to say invalid password, so I know I'm good. This now is going to be the user that I use for everything else because I want to verify that my bind user has the appropriate access. If you have other um, base DNs that you need to use, you can add in dash B and then put in DC equals shadow man, DC equals dev. I only have one, so the default worked for me. But if you have issues with that first search, you can add in this to connect to the correct uh, bind DN for you and that base DN. So now that I've got this all up and running, I'm going to go back into controller for LDAP group type. So maybe again, I don't know what type of groups I have. So I can go back into here. And I know I have a specific group that I've created called Tower Admins. So if I do a search on that particular group, I can A, see all the users that are there, which for now is not important. But I now know this a group of names type object class. What does that correlate to an LDAP group type? If I scroll down to the group type list, table 3.1 has all of these various group types. And I can see handles the group of names object. A, this is going to be important how it's written this way, because that's going to be useful later. But I know that I want the group of names type. I don't want to start TLS. I don't need any of that capability. 
for user DN template. I'm once again going to scroll down and it's going to give me an example of UID equals username. I'm not going to use that because I know that I want to use the user that logged in as that UID. So there is an LDAP nomenclature for UID equals percent user S. So this gives me essentially the user that's logged in as the UID. So it's going to search specifically for that user. And then I know the rest of that search criteria because I just got it for the DN. So this now is that user DN template. I could use, if you have more than one uh, template, skip this step and jump down to the user search instead. But for my case, that's all I've got. I've got that one DN. So I don't, I'm not using TLS in this case because I have SSL set up if I'm using 636. Additional authenticator fields I don't really use. LDAP connection options. So I'm going to copy and paste this because I know these are useful. This helps for preventing certain LDAP queries from hanging with Active Directory and you know setting up some timeouts. So I'm legit just going to copy and paste that into here. LDAP group type parameters. So again, to, for the chosen group init, which if I scroll back up, to 3.1 and see the group of names type, it tells me what that initializer method is. Or if I follow this link to the Django docs, I can go in here, click the group of names type, and it also gives me the name attribute equals CN in this case. So I know what my group type parameter is, which is name CN, done. Group search is that next step. Fortunately, I've already done a group search, so I know most of what I need. I already know that to get to a group, it is at accounts, shadowman, and dev. So I'm just going to copy and paste that from that last group search that I did. Usually, it is a scope subtree as the option. How do I know that that's the case for this group that I just searched? If I scroll up with scope subtree, so perfect. And then the last thing I need is the object class, which I already know is group of names. As I talked about before, if you notice when I was talking about group of names, it is specifically in here capitalized with O and N. So that will be key for this process. And you can see how it does expect um, for the group search, it expects parentheses for the object class. So I'll type in object class equals group of names. Key thing to note, if you have nested groups that you're leveraging in any way, shape, or form, make sure you check the nested option. So there's a nested group of names type. I don't have groups that are members of groups, so I don't need that. So I will skip that step. The last thing I need is the user attribute map. So I do obviously want you know first name, last name, and email to be properly mapped to my LDAP server. So I want to get what those attributes are. I can just pick a, honestly, a random user to make that work. So I'll pick my user, so the A Dorjan user that I've got. So I can go back to here, and instead of you know searching for that CN, I'm actually going to search for a UID instead. Give me that same prompt. And this gives me all the attributes, everything that they're a member of. So I know, as Ansible calls out in the docs, I'm specifically looking for email, first name, last name. So I can see given name is first name, SN is my last name, and email is mail. So if I go back in here, go to user attribute mapping, this then is as simple as email, mail, last name was SN, and first name is given name. So some map to what I'm getting directly back from IDM. I'm not going to do an LDAP user search because I don't need to do that in my particular case. I'm just going to check enabled so it does work. And I'm not going to do any additional mapping, but I'm going to test. I know that this is going to fail because I do not have uh, certificates set up uh, for the certificate authority that I have. So if I attempt to log in, I do anticipate seeing a failure. What I'm going to do is in OpenShift, because that's where I have this installed. If I go into OpenShift as an admin, go to pods and look for the gateway pod, I can go into the logs for that pod. 
scroll up and I'll see at some point an error and I may just have myself re-log in to do this, but I'll basically see that there's an error for can't connect to LDAP server, certificate verify failed. So I know this is specifically a certificate issue. You could also look on your LDAP server to see if you get similar errors, but this is going to be that place where you get to see what's going on. If I have an RPM based install, obviously I'm not gonna use that OpenShift method. I would have to find the logs uh, in Ansible, which is going to be at var log, Ansible automation platform, gateway, gateway.log. And if you're using the um, containerized installer, you wanna be logged in as the user that ran the installer. And then you can do a journal CTL container name equals automation gateway. In this case, obviously that's gonna fail because I'm not doing this as a containerized install, but that will then give you the same logs so I can see the authentication errors that come in. So to prove that all of this is set up, I'm actually gonna go back in as my admin user. And I'm gonna edit this authentication real quick because I know that I do not have that cert and my certificate or my uh, LDAP server does allow LDAP, not just LDAP S. So if I try to log in, I am able to get into the platform. Obviously I expect this to give an error because I don't have admin access, so I can't get to that page. But if I return to bash dashboard, I am logged in as a very basic user. So I'm gonna log out and go back to that admin user. And I wanna set up one mapping in order for this to work. So I'm gonna go back in authentication mappings, go to IDM, go to edit authentication. I'm just gonna jump into that mapping step. I'm gonna add an authentication mapping. In this case, I'm just going to do a super user for myself. So, you know, admins, trigger on groups, operation, I'm only gonna put in one group so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go back to my terminal and conveniently enough, I do have this tower admins group that I know that I'm part of. I can just paste that into here, click create, click next and click next. So I'm gonna finish. So now when I log back out, log in as my, as my user, I should be able to get back to that page because I will now be a super user. And sure enough, I'm logged back in can get to that page. If you're doing mapping and users aren't getting mapped in, if you go to the API as you know, a privileged user, you can go to the API, go to gateway, go to V1 and then go to users. I can see every user that's been able to log in and also maybe I go to the, you know, that A Dorsen user. I can see the last login results. So five maps to the um, authenticator map number. So it's five, because so I've done this a few times and I can see that item number 15, which if I dig through the mapping itself will correspond to that super user mapping that I set up did evaluate to true, which is why I got mapped in as a super user. One thing to note, if you're using Active Directory, there is an issue in 2.5 where you have to use lowercase. So if you're using Active Directory group type or nested Active Directory group type, you'll need to make sure when you set up those groups for the mapping, you use all lowercase options. So you may have previously used capital CNOU with 2.4 or older. It is a bug that the BU is working through, but as of today, May 2nd, 2025, you do need to make sure all of those parameters are lowercase or the user mapping will not work correctly. So just something to keep in mind. That's really what I would focus on. If you have issues with the authentication itself, I can't log in at all. Go to those logs, whether it's in OpenShift, whether it's at the RPM level at the gateway.log or the containerized level to use general CTL. And then all of what you can do can be done through LDAP search to make sure I've got the exact parameters to pass in. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how I can go through some of the steps to get exactly what the LDAP searches are going to return from the platform and map that into what needs to exist in Ansible. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about some of the detailed walkthroughs of getting LDAP set up in the Ansible Automation Platform 2.5. All the links that I've walked through in the video will be included in the description down below. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.